Let's take a closer look at how long a computation takes as the input gets bigger. Earlier in this class, we designed two functions for reversing a list. The first function we designed for reversing a list is called rev. To warm up, let's analyze how much time is taken by the helper function used by rev, called at to end. Unlike the main function rev, the helper function at to end does not use any other helper function. It only uses built-in operations that each take a small and fixed amount of time, and it also recursively calls itself. We can use Dr. Racket's stepper to watch the calculation steps taken by add to end. Let's add the string man to the end of the two element list dog bytes. First, the computer looks up the definition of the add to end function. Then the computer checks if the input list is empty. It's not. Then the computer checks if the input list is counts. It is. Then the computer selects the first of the input list. Then the computer selects the rest of the input list. Now the computer is ready to make the recursive call to add to end. Besides watching these calculation steps in the stepper, we can also write them down in a sequence of equations, kind of like a film strip. First, the computer looks up the definition of the add to end function. Then the computer checks if the input list is empty. It's not. Then the computer checks if the input list is counts. It is. Then the computer selects the first of the input list. Then the computer selects the rest of the input list. Now the computer is ready to make the recursive call to add to n. Also, we can make a table to summarize how much time has been spent on each operation. First, the computer looks up the definition of the add to end function. Then the computer checks if the input list is empty. It's not. Then the computer checks if the input list is counts. It is. Then the computer selects the first of the input list. Then the computer selects the rest of the input list. Now the computer is ready to make the recursive call to add to end. So far, so good, but we're not done yet because the recursive call to add to end still has to run. And after the recursive call is done, there is still a counts before we're finally done. Now, the key to simplifying this analysis is to note that even though each operation we're counting here takes a different amount of time, it's always a small amount of time that does not depend on how big its input is. And every time you install a new version of Dr. Racket or upgrade your computer, that small amount of time is going to change anyway. I mean, who knows, maybe next month, counts is going to become twice as fast and first and rest are going to become five times as fast and whatever. So because in computer science, we're interested in the long run after any number of upgrades, a computer scientist will treat all these small operations as about the same and count them all together as the input grows. And while we're at it, because we never specified the time unit used here, we might as well count these eight steps as one, and these eight steps as one, and these three steps as one, kind of like we're just counting one uh, serving of steps on each row. To be careful here, the only reason we can fudge the numbers like this and treat eight and three as about the same amount of time is that the difference between eight and three doesn't get any bigger when the input to the program gets bigger. So our conclusion is, it takes three steps to add to the end of a two-element list.